don't know. Do, do you know what percentage the like the batteries are? No. No? No. I'm trying to check these fucking audio. Okay, it's connected, but it's on fucking Look, it'd be so cool that we're filming in the woods. So that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be great. What? I'm talking myself. Oh, sorry. Oh, the TX, what does that mean? The TX. Okay, then turn it off, I guess. It's done. The, um... That's great, Leo. That's great. The... news stuff. I'll get some flannel on. What the fuck? Hello. That's my flannel. Hello. 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 I'm Mike. So you were probably talking like this? Yeah. I'm listening this out for the first time. How are you going to be talking? Nice. Okay, now we'll Let's check that. Here we are. Heading off. Heading Doing off. it. Say hello to the camera, Louie. Bye, camera. Hi. Yeah. What movie are we doing, Louie? Can you tell? Can you tell? Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Do you know the legend of the Blair Witch, Leo? What is, what, tell me, what is the legend of the Blair Witch? Uh, there was this guy, right? And he, uh, this, this, this spirit, uh, told him to kill people, and he did. Right. And the spirit is, um, the witch, right? Okay. And she was like alive, right, in the 18th century. And then like she was accused of witchcraft because she like she was the most beautiful woman in town, right? right. And, all the, and all of the men and women, the 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 women were envious and the men were um, up in her business. They they accused her of witchcraft because of her eternal beauty and how her crops were so much better than everyone else's. Is this, is this the actual and, story? It sounds. Um, and she. Um, she like was like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not a witch. It's just I was born this way, like Lady Gaga. Yeah. And um, so she was thrown into the ocean, and as a last ditch effort, her mother was a witch, right? Oh. So as a last ditch effort, she used an incantation to curse the town that uh, she was killed in. Where are you going? Sydney Park. Is there any ghosts of Sydney Park, Louis? Any witches, I mean, the witches. Right, so the the witch of Nakat. <laughs> hey guys, here we are. Hello. Heading to the forest. We're a bit late on time because Leo forgot his tripod at home. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. And but it's, it's fine now. We're good, we've got like an hour and a half to film this. Yeah, hopefully that's enough time. Better be. Find a good spot. Amongst the trees. There's a lot to carry. Give us a slurp, boy. Yeah! What are these tents or something? I don't know what this is. I, I say like on here. Side. Probably on this side. Right? Where? On that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Like just right down here. Hello! This is a uh, microphone test within the windy uh, f stuff around me. Uh, Blair Witch Review happening now. Should that face away? Oh, it's a shotgun. Oh, I can just turn it around. Is that, what's yeah. it on? What level is it on? Maybe like a... How's that, huh? Let's move back. That's good, we'll move back. Look at that! Oh. Okay, in three. Two, one. Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome to the Horror Herald, Herald with your hosts Leo and Louis. Louis. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Horror Herald. Now, if you're a longtime viewer, or if you just viewed some of the other episodes, mm -hmm. you would probably think that uh, where we are right now is not our usual set. Yes. And that's right, because we are in the woods. We're in a different void. A new world. A different world. A different usually world. when we review a movie, yeah. we're usually just sitting at home and then suddenly, boom, we're watching yeah. a movie and then yeah. suddenly we're transported yeah. to a different dimension. And our home is normally a dark, dark void. Dark void. When we're, I say home, I mean like an empty space. Empty space. And then suddenly and then, when a movie is just, maybe it's yeah, new yeah. or... Or a classic. Or classic. Is, yeah. It's like, boom. We, we well, just transport into our uh, location of choice. And today we have we have chosen the woods, the woods. because we are film filming not filming because we were viewing, reviewing a special film which is 
The Blair Witch Project. Blair Witch Project. There you go. Blair there Witch go. Project. Very special. Now, if you know a bit about that film, it's a, a huge portion of it is set in the woods. And just let you know, we're going to be pretty spoilery Spoiler about this me. film during the review. Um, but before we do, of course, we've got to talk about our sponsor. So here is our sponsor. Wow. Scan the QR code. Scan it. Scan it. Here it is. Our sponsor. Now, trust me, this sponsor is well worth your time because this week, our sponsor is called, I'll just leave this here. Who killed Mr. Alligator? Right. Weebly.com. That's right. Who killed Mr. Alligator? Weebly.com. This is the title. It's a great little thing. It's a little fun. Uh, take you five, ten minutes if you want to do it. A little murder mystery. It's like a murder mystery where, you know, you got to look at a crime scene. You got to you got to look at uh, case files of you know the main suspects and deduce who is the murderer of Mr. Alligator. It's a lot of fun. You've had a look at it, Louis. What do you I've think had a look of it? it? It's very good. So it's one of the one of the sponsors that are putting a little bit more effort than usual. Yeah. But it's it's well worth your time. It's fun. Uh, normally these sponsors, if you don't know what they are, they're just fun websites for you to check out. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're they're fun and interactive. And I'm not going to say too much more about it because you can see who who killed Mr. Alligator. It's uh, hopefully worth your time. If it's not, let us know. Yeah. Um, but that's that. We've we've said our sponsor, and now we must get to the news. The news. The news at now. Um, so I think yeah, I'm going to point this way. There you go. So it? the news of the week, and let me get my phone because I have to refer to my notes. The news of this week, Louis, if you could do the first one. So. There you go. So Ready? the first part of the news is that, what is this one? New audio horror series comes from Monkey Paw Productions. That's right. Monkey Paw Productions, if you don't know what that is, it's a uh, production company that got started by uh, Jordan Peele, uh, the director of Us, Get Out, and um, recently Nope. Um, and it's uh, it's apparently doing more than just you know films. And uh, of course, as, as it's Jordan Peele's production company, he's going to be producing this project. Of course. And it's basically, um, it's an audiobook series called Quiet Part Loud. Um, it's going to be launching November 15th, 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if this is going to come out. I mean, I don't know. What's, what's the date today? Today. Yeah. It comes out today. Oh. We're filming on November 15th. It's so coming out today. You'll probably be watching it's this out. video a bit later. But it's out right now. It's out right now. Mm -hmm. uh, when we when we are filming this, and basically it's uh, I I'll get I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the plot. Um, it's gonna it's on Spotify. Uh, it's spot it's working with Spotify's Gilmet Media, and it's basically two twelve uh, short form episodes that'll be available for listeners to binge, and it is set before the Trump presidency, That's and specific. follows yeah Rick Egan. A fear-mongering right-wing radio host who loses oh. his platform in the wake of 9/11 for spreading xenophobic rumors surrounding a group of missing Muslim teenagers. Okay, and it's yeah. a horror series. Yeah, yeah. But apparently, so uh, eight huh. years later, the washed-up Egan is slumming it on the convention circuit when a mysterious woman offers a tantalizing revelation: one of the missing teens has reappeared. Egan embarks on a crusade for vindication and ultimately makes. Uh, a force, I don't know what that is, a force in bargain with a demonic shape shifting sound monster known as the blank. And I'm not going to say too much more because maybe we've given too much away already. Wow. But yeah, demonic sound s demon. That so, could be cool. That's but very it's got interesting. That kind of Jordan Peele political wit that's maybe, yeah. I mean, this is a bit more heavy handed than yeah. the Jordan Peele stuff. But the protagonist is a, is, is a right wing host. host. I don't, I guess so. That's interesting. Nah, give it a go. I mean, I, I mean, you listen to podcasts, don't you, Louis? Sure. Yeah. And I mean, we should. I mean, I'll it's not going to be as great as this podcast. No, no of course no, not. I'll, I'll give it a listen. Why not? Definitely give it a give it a go. All right, the next thing. It's over here. Next thing, you just do it, Louis. What does it say? Robo Santa terrorizes the town in new horror Christmas movie. There what? you go. New horror Christmas. This is this a David movie? Harbor one? It's not. That's another one. It's another oh. horror Christmas movie. And uh, yeah, um, it was very, I was very scarce. The news. I'm trying to okay. find the best I can. It's called Christmas Bloody Christmas, right? And it's uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, set on Christmas Eve, and a fiery record store owner, Toy Tombs, just wants to get drunk and party until the robotic Santa Claus at a nearby nearby toy store nibble. goes hey <laughs> nibble goes haywire and makes her night more than a little complicated. And yeah, it says a rampaging Robo -ro Santa comes out on Shutter. December 9th, 2022. Um, it's done by uh, Joe Bigos. Um, he, he's known for Bliss and VFW. I'm not sure what that is. 
But um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a cool new Christmas. We're we're getting towards that holiday season, so yeah. I thought you should be, people should know that if you want to see a Robo Santa go haywire and kill also, everyone, David Harbour is doing. David Harbour is doing yeah. another one. That one seemed more action now than yeah, what we're horror. talking about. Yeah, it's I less like horror. It's, yeah. But, so yeah. yeah, this is like a full blown horror. That always happens. Robo. There's always Santa goes crazy. Santa, Santa goes crazy. Santa so if you're into some killer Santas, I want one where Santa is like the original Santa, where he's like from the woods mm-hmm. and like he's like hobo Santa. Yeah. I want to make that movie. Okay. Where yeah. it's like in the woods. Specky story is not there. You know, like, you know, that would be interesting. I want that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that one. All right. Next, next story. HBO Max's It prequel has found its showrunner. Showrunner. So there you go. Wow. So this is, this will be one that we care about a bit. Yeah. Um, it has a special place in our hearts, I think. It does. It definitely was the horror movie or horror story that got me into horror, I think. Was it was it for me? Because mm-hmm. I remember the first horror movie I ever saw was It 1990. So that was oh, very wow. it's very special and for me at least. Yeah. Um and you you I, yeah, I mean we we're, we're pretty familiar with the book, so I've read the book. Yeah, Boy, it's pretty good. It's but special. uh yeah, so it's coming out on HBO Max. Uh it's titled Welcome to Derry. Um and it will serve as a prequel to Stephen King's movies. Uh the series will begin in the nineteen sixties in the time leading up to the events of It Part One. Uh it's it's yeah, it's it's gonna be I think Andy Machete and Bobby Machete, uh, ba- uh, Barbara Machete are going to produce it. Uh-huh. And basically, yeah, it reports that Jason Fuchs, I think that's his name, known for Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, okay, Ice Age Continental Drift, and Brad C- Caleb Kane, known for Moonhaven, Black Sails and Fringe. Black Sails and Fringe. Yeah, okay. will serve as okay. co-show runners. Right. And it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. And Andy Ma- uh, Machete, who did the It movies, yeah. uh, uh, in talks to direct episode one, the pilot episode. You know, they usually have. So that's very cool. Yeah. It's like Sam Raimi with um, Evil yeah, Dead. Yeah, with Ash vs. Evil Dead. So that's that's very cool. And cool. yeah, I mean, do we need a prequel? Do you think, Chloe? We don't, there is no prequel to this book. So yeah. I'm interested to there's see what comes up. Well, there's with. definitely lore There's beforehand. lore behind it, but there's no solid. It's like the Game of Thrones. We don't really know what happens before. Yeah all that shit yeah, happens. I mean, but it's kind of like speculated. Yeah. I mean, if it is like the highest grossing horror movie of all time, yeah. I guess it's bound to have more it stuff coming out. So and I'm, I'm excited. I, I, it. I hope um, if they have Pennywise, Hopefully which they got it's to, actually like scary. Yeah. And, and like it go, I hope it goes full, full crazy. For her. Do you want Bill Skarsgård back as Pennywise? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I want, I want like, you know, like him as like scary stuff before like his his clown days i want like full intergalactic turtle mm. i want the god who comes in at the end of the book yeah. i want like that crazy stuff that wasn't in any of the other stuff yeah i want that it's exciting i'll be there to watch it and i think I'll it's coming out it. i'm not sure when but they just probably found like this show one is probably in two years. yeah probably in a while but that's the news and now my friends for the movie Blair Witch. Blair Witch. okay all right now to do it we're gonna we're gonna cut to our um Set up that you're going to do. Okay, ready? Two, one. Whoa! Whoa! It's different. All right, it's time for the review portion. So, okay, now it's time for our review portion of the the review where... The reason why you guys are here. We are doing Blair Witch Project. Mm-hmm. Fantastic movie. Came out in... 1999. 1999. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, it is directed by... If I can have a look here. Uh, it's a film it? by Radio Sanchez and Daniel Merrick. Um, and stars Heather uh, D- Donhe. Can I pronounce it correctly? I apologize. Michael Williams and Joshua Leonard. And it's very cool. And it came out in 1999. It came out of Artisan Entertainment. And I'm going to stop just reading this. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So, uh, general, but, general feelings before. General feelings yeah. before we get into the in depth review. Uh-huh. Um, it's great. I mean, what, what can we say? I love this movie. It's a good movie. I love this movie. Why do you think we go through so much commitment to yeah. come into the woods to. Yeah. To talk about this. It is probably one of my favorite horror movies. Mm-hmm. I love this movie. Great atmosphere. Some of the best acting ever because it wasn't really acting. It is yeah. one of the best horror movies I've ever seen because literally nothing happens, but everything happens. Right. It's great. Yeah. I love it. 
Yeah, it's all right. Um, no, no, I'm kidding. It's good. It's a, it's, it's truly a fantastic horror movie that, like, for people who love filmmaking, every time you watch it, you go like, "Oh, I want to make a movie." Yeah. If they can yeah. do that, oh, we can do that. Like yeah, a lot of people will say, it. you know, like the first Evil Dead did that for a lot of people. This movie is like, oh god, let's just grab our phone and film something. Like it's, yeah, it's go very and film something. It's like, a film that inspires you to make something, can horror. make something horror. But yeah, it's it, it really is a uh, fantastic movie where it where it's like playing with theater of the mind, and it's, that's yeah. kind of what it's all kind of really about. But that's uh, we're giving, I think, a bit too much away of our thoughts right now. So we probably mm-hmm. should just get to um, our positives and negatives. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I think, I think we normally start off with our positives, don't we? Don't we? we? But yeah, I feel like I this so. movie. No, actually, yeah, let's start off with our positives because I feel like I have a lot more positives than negatives about this movie. Yeah. Would you yeah, agree? Same. That it's like, yeah. our positives will go on forever, and our negatives will just like be very small. So should we start off with our negatives then? You know what? Actually, uh, I think we should do our positives first, as we always do. So sure. let's let's we'll do that. We'll do our positives first. Um, so yeah, do you want me to start us off, or do you want to start us off? You start us off, Leo. I'll start- oh Get yeah. Get your phone. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let this start. Uh, okay, yeah. So my first positive is that um, I think I think I'll just get this out of the way. It's a it's a big overarching one because there's a lot of emphasis on kind of the three trio. Mm-hmm. I think the acting from everyone. Even the townsfolk in this yeah, movie yeah. Uh, is really well very done. natural and well. It done. It feels very authentic, and that's what they're trying to do. Really, it is yeah. a. Uh, I don't want to say it's a mockumentary because it's not a mockumentary. That's, no, you yeah. know, that's that's comedy. But no, it, yeah. it's made to look like a documentary. It's made to look like a real thing. Mm-hmm. So I think the fact that you no, know, not one person, for me at least, yeah. when I'm watching the film, feels fake or feels like they're just putting on a performance. Yeah. Um, was great and uh, yeah. just really helped the film yeah. kind of sell the idea that this could be a real thing. It this adds to the, yeah, a... I was going to say, it adds to the realism of yeah. what is happening and what is happening to these characters. And like it, like the torment of these people are actually the, out there for days. Yeah, it just adds to the, the realism of what is happening and all these things happening to these characters because it's the, it's a documentary. The, the woman, uh, Heather, is the director of this documentary and she... And she's like all filming everything because she wants to capture everything through a lens so it doesn't feel real. And she yeah. wants to um, experience everything like that. So she has on footage and she can show people it. And like they, they make fun of her and they get angry at her because they don't want a camera in their face while they're trying to deal yeah. with all the stress. And it just it just builds up and all these characters feel natural. And yeah. like, yeah. And they, it's fun because they always go... They always get angry at each other and they get pissy at each other. And then suddenly, like a minute later, they start filming again because they start being friends. Yeah. And then like they start hanging out and just like going like, it's not your fault, it's not your fault, it's not your fault. But then yeah. they, yeah, it's... I, that was a, I think that was another positive I really had with that is that it yeah. showed kind of an authentic relationship between the, yeah. between the three. And especially because, you know, we've done, you know, f- uh, filming before and, yeah. you know, we, we've directed things that... You know, we we know we kind of put we can kind of put our, uh, our feet in the shoes of Heather, yeah. where we're like, yeah, I mean, there's moments where we want to just film stuff, but everyone's like, oh, yeah. come on, like, yeah, come so on. we have to go, we have and to you go, want to get everything like, you, you come can, on. dude, like, this isn't the time. Yeah, and I we feel we feel for Heather because you know we've been in this kind of situations ourselves where you know they Heather so wants to get this done, and yes, yeah. everything's going completely crap, but um, she doesn't want to you know forget about. The project that she's working on, and I think that's very authentic and cool. Yeah, and I think that's um, yeah, make yeah, adds to the realism as you yeah. were saying. Was that authentic relationship of mm. the director and her and, crew, yeah. and also yeah, just the relationship between the three because I think they were all kind of distinct characters in a way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and they felt like just real like real people. Yeah. You know, making crude jokes and whatever. Yeah. They just felt like real. So now they can't find real, real people. I don't know. They're, te- they're not teens, but you know they're. I don't know, you know who they are. I don't know if they're they college are, students, they maybe. I'm not sure. But they feel authentically like young adults. Yeah, because like, they, the they rented all this equipment, so they can't be like full-on filmy people. So they, yeah. they rented it, and they're complaining about they have to get it back in time. They have shifts at work. They have to yeah. get to... They, they, like, they make references to things that feel natural and not like a forced script thing, you know? It's... Yeah. Yeah. And they, and the, yeah, it just felt real. And also, I mean, it also helped the fact that, you know, they don't look like they're, you know, they have to be like models, you know, who are no, yeah, the yeah. actors. They feel, they like, feel like real, real people. Real people they found. Not or regular, friends. Yeah. Like the director, they feel like the person who made this movie are like, hey, do you want to be in this movie? Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. And they happen to be fantastic. But yeah. no, I mean, I'm sure, I'm, but the, I think, I think they're still great actors, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, that, that was a big overarching yeah. positive I had. Louis. Yeah. 
What about you? My next one is um, I feel like the beginning of the film really sets up mm. in two ways. Like the beginning sets up the relationship of like who they are, where they are, the two the two friends. Josh and Heather, you know, yeah. they're two friends who are making this documentary. It's her documentary. She's a director. And it really explores her. Like, she's filming everything even beforehand. She wants to make the documentary on the documentary. And um, and then they see Mike and uh, they meet Mike, showing, establishing he's an outsider. And then they actually go. And what else is it establishes that establishes, like, they're outside, uh, that they're not actually from there. Yeah. Um, they, they visit there and they talk to, and they then they um, talk to all the um, people from the town and that builds up the suspense and the horror of the witch. It shows like, because like, not everyone's um, expectations and reality of this witch is the same. Some people have different stories. Yeah. Some people have stories from other people. It feels just like from like, like everyone has these different tales and of, of the witch and descriptions of the witch. And like, so when we do meet the witch, it like, we don't know what is true and what's not, yeah. or like if it is fake and like the child closing the mother's mouth. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's yeah. freaky. I mean, you, yeah, it, you, you watch it the second time, yeah. you realize, oh, that like could mean something. Yeah. That like this kid has heard, and yeah. she's just like, no, no, don't. Cause it's like Bloody Mary, like, yeah. don't, don't say it. Like, like it's like me. Or well, even then, like, no, you, yeah. I, I felt like watching it, maybe the witch is kind of doing something to this child that's making them sure. Yeah. So like, I felt like there's something supernaturally wrong with this yeah. child. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, yeah, yeah. It was a kind of like, yeah. uh, or like th- watch it the second time yeah. when you know, you know, the concept of like children yeah. and you learn about the story about how a serial killer, yeah. you know, yeah. brought children into. Yeah. Maybe this uh, kid has felt something in the past. Yeah. Or yeah. Maybe it's like yeah. connected somehow. It makes it more creepy, yeah. especially on a rewatch. Yeah. And I got to agree with you. I think one of my positives is that, yeah, those opening, uh, I'm not sure how long it is. I think it's maybe only like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. It's like, it's like 10, 15 um, minutes. Yeah. I think. He, yeah, hearing those tales, it really gets your, you know, yeah. nerve. You, you gets your nerves on on a high. I mean, the, the, especially yeah. for me, the it's story. It's like expectations to go into it. Like it's yeah. like it's like it's not like um a movie where like you don't know what's gonna happen and then stuff happens. It's like mm. there's already a preconceived notion of like what the mythos yeah. but, of yeah. the Blair Witch but is. Even just hearing the stories, it's freaking me out. You know, yeah. like even yeah. that is kind of scary me. Yeah. And um, sorry, block nose. Um, but even. Yeah, the, I mean, especially the story uh, about the guy who took you know kids into told by the boys, uh, uh, yeah. into into a basement and killed them you know, one by yeah. one. That was like, yeah. whoa, that hit me hard. That's scary. Yeah, and yeah, and that sets up the ending. And I'll, I'll get to that later. Yeah. But it, it, those stories, even you know, just basic stories, no need to show like footage of like what it actually was or like. Uh, like yeah. ba- uh, like a flashbacks to that scene. Yeah. It's scary enough just hearing them talk about it. Yeah, and really goes like, "Holy shit! What is this witch? What is this?" Oh, I love and it really so much. creeps yeah. you out. So, I I, I love that part of the movie. And mm-hmm. of course, you know, the rest of the movie is really in the woods. So I cherish that first yeah. fifteen minutes. What sanity, and, you know? Yeah, yeah, and it's uh yeah really sets this up. Really sets. I have the story well, especially because all these people seem like regular town folk who, yeah, I've heard about it and, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it really also adds to the authenticity. So yeah. definitely, definitely like that. Yeah. You're next, Leah. I'm next. Okay. Um, uh, what I really like is that the when we are in the woods, when uh-huh. we're doing the whole, like, uh, which is basically the majority of the film, um, what the director does really well is it makes it feel claustrophobic. Yeah. Uh, makes the setting feel... Like helps us feel crazy along with the mm-hmm. with the uh, trio where you know when you only see trees is like what we do. We we maybe try to look for yeah. things as well. Yeah. It's and like, it yeah. just creates a great atmosphere. The positive is that great atmosphere in yeah. the film. It feels like it, it feels, feels like, like they, they're walking through the same woods and they're not getting anywhere. It's the same place over and over again. Yeah. And like it's just more woods and you want to get out of the woods so bad and you don't want to see woods all the time and you just feel like their struggle. And that by the time they're just like sitting in the woods just accepting their yeah. fate. Just makes it's dreadful. Yeah. But yeah, I just think that the claustrophobic feel of it, or you know, when they're going around and around the same places, yeah, it's the same, the same places, tree. And it, then she's like, "It's not the same tree. It's not the same tree." It really yeah. adds to the fear of it, and yeah. it's a kind of new kind of fear that's you know not the typical like, "Oh my god, there's a serial killer, whatever." They were gonna want. Yeah. It's like, "Holy crap!" Yeah. I wouldn't want to be yeah. stuck in a forest. Yeah. It's going around the same place yeah. all the time. It's that every is scary. and every noise they hear, it's it's scary. Like every yeah. noise, even if it's like a deer, or if it's like a fox yeah. noise, or if it's a bug noise, or a tree. Yeah. It's just like, what is that? And it even adds to the tension of the, the trio, the you know, like yeah. you, you don't want them to go crazy and, you know, hurt yeah. each other, but you've seen that, oh my you God, want them to this feels claustrophobic. Yeah. It adds to the tension, like, holy God, holy crap, what is going to happen yeah. with the trio, you yeah. know? 
Uh, so at the film, like so, Mike kicks that map in the lake and yeah. he thinks it's you is useless and he's going crazy because yeah. like to him it's Greek so he throws it in the lake and he's just like I it was like it was like with the map we were lost so we like let's just keep going it doesn't matter and he just starts laughing yeah so I yeah. but definitely I think I think the atmosphere in this film is really well done Amazing. that's kind of the positive yeah. Louis oh yeah I like the the like the juxtaposition like this is a short one juxtaposition of like them arguing and getting angry at each other. And then yeah. straight cutting to like them, like being friendly and forgiving each other. Going, like, oh sorry, yeah. I didn't mean it. It was just the stress of the situation. I know we both want to get out of here. Mm-hmm. It's like a completely realistic situation. Makes it makes it yeah. very tense. Makes it very yeah. tense. It's like it's like when you when you get angry at a friend in a situation, then later you're like, sorry, I, I didn't mean it. Like yeah. it makes it feel realistic yeah. and like they're actually they are friends. So I'll, I'll skip to one that we didn't really talk about. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll say like I wrote like the noises are scary and would frighten anyone, which makes it um scarier. Like what makes those like, it's like what is making those noises at night? Yeah. It's like it could be just anything. Like it's like if you just watch this movie and not even like know it's a witch, it's just like oh it's just noises outside. Like who's making those rocks? It could be yeah. a deer. It could be a person. But what if it is a witch? And then like, okay, so if it is a witch, the witch is following them. And if it is a witch following them, what does it want with them? And then yeah. like, and you think, and you go down the spiral of like, what is the witch? What does it want with them? Is it going to kill them? Like, why is it making these noises? And then like, how is it making these noises? So like later on in the film, when like Josh is, Josh is, uh, is lost and, and like, I get this frightening feeling like when he starts screaming for help and it's not actually him. Yeah. I just have this, when I first watched it, I just imagined this like description of the witch that this lady gives, just like out there in the woods, just mouth agape, not even moving her mouth and just watching them and just the words coming out of her mouth. Yeah. And like, it just like enforces theater of the mind onto yeah. you. And it's just like, what is making those noises? Mm. Uh, so many mo- movies these days try to go like, it's the things you don't see that scares you, but like they try too hard, I feel like. So I feel like I feel like the theater of the mind and the expectation of what this witch is really adds to the, the scariness of this movie. But to connect to that, I think because uh, we're on the topic of sound, I think what is really great about this movie is that it doesn't have to rely on like music or like you know those yeah. kind of like tense yeah. soundtracks yeah. to make stuff scary. It just is. Um, I may be one. Is there? I don't think is there. Is there music in this film besides the end credits? I don't think so. I don't think so. I I, I mean at least I didn't hear it. Yeah. But I really, uh, besides you know, in the car, I think there was like there was like music, yeah. obvious, uh, obviously. But but yeah, I think um, what's really yeah really great about this film is that yeah, it didn't need to rely on music, that typical kind of sound yeah. fa- effects, that yeah. kind of uh, not, obviously not synth, but you know stuff that horror movies normally rely on to get jump scares happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's really great that it just it didn't need music; it just was kind of scary. Yeah, so, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, uh, that. That almost basically does it for me, I think, because these are just the overarching yeah. ones. I mean, it's I don't have too many like major positives. Yeah. Uh, cause, uh, but I, I think yeah. it's I think it's kind of like major. a lot of, a, a lot of the my ones. um a lot of my stuff like kind of fits into like the same idea of like them talking together, like like talking about food and like trying to get trying to get out of this situation and trying to make themselves feel better, talking about things they like. And then, then like the absolute horror that comes after it, and because like, like they talk about food, and they start getting together again, and then suddenly Josh disappears. Yeah. And like the and then find them finding the teeth and hair. Just like, and like the the realness of like of how it's filmed makes the, like the somber moments more impactful, and then like the the actual ending of when Mike yeah. like get, uh, Mike gets caught and then like it goes quiet and you only hear her screaming in the distance yeah that, and then yeah. she then she starts running down that's scary because like that because yeah. it's like filmed with the cameras right yeah and we don't really see like I got confused like who's filming what yeah. so when I heard those screaming I thought is that the witch like is the yeah, witch making sure. those screams like is the witch because mm-hmm. I, I, I I don't know because I thought the person who was like holding the camera was Heather so I was like how is that happening I'm, yeah. I, I'm obviously probably wrong but yeah, I think the way it's filmed is that you question a lot as well. Yeah. And you don't. Um, but of course, I think the one major positive that we're going to talk about is yeah. the ending, which I think yeah. is really effective. It's really effective. Um, you know, when it's from the house. Contributes to the. Um, the yeah. Because like there's like handprints in the walls, children yeah, handprints in ha- the walls. Yeah, that, I thought that stuff is yeah. smart. I was like, oh my god, that's like the story and there's, I said before. And there's like um, there's like markings, which yeah. was like in the script in like the coffin rock. She talks about like those markings engraved into their foreheads, mm-hmm. and there's like ancient markings engraved into the walls, and like him standing in the corner. It's exactly yeah. like how 
the uh, man killed the children and like how she also um, gets killed and um, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's just such a great ending. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, and I think it's abrupt. It, yeah, I think yeah. the ending is like one of the most memorable things about the movie, yeah. and especially where you don't see it, you still don't see the witch. No, at the very end, you still don't see the witch. Don't see the witch. You just see um, I'm not sure who the guy's name was. Michael, Michael just you know standing Mike. in the corner, yeah. just like. Said, uh, just like uh, the story before where one of the children you know yeah. has to face the corner face while the, the other person gets killed yeah. and I s- watched it the second time I was like oh yeah, yeah. Heather's about to be killed yeah. and he's facing yeah. the away more, the more that's I creepy the more I watch this movie the yeah. more like connections the more, and it's were. just it's, it's such a film that, that's so enjoyable to watch because you're like oh my god that's the thing that's been said yeah. before and, that's you, the thing. and you feel kind of smart but yeah. uh, even though it's obvious yeah. but I I it, it's stuff like that that the subtlety you know yeah. the, the stuff it, it's subtle it's not yeah. like i want you to face the wall you know it's, yeah, it's yeah. like it, it's subtle things that you look around going like mm-hmm. there's the handprints there's the markings yeah. there's you know michael looking you know away yeah well oh heather's now gonna be yeah killed so it's, it's like, all, so all stuff like that and like the noises and like the vapor like a vapor goes past the screen at one point and that's exactly what the fisherman says. And like yeah. all of these things are set up earlier in the film. Yeah, the subtlety great. is just, it's fantastic. It really, yeah. really makes yeah. this film yeah. really great. And do you have a negative? I, say? yeah, so do you, do you I don't have, have any, any I have you no have negatives? No negatives. All no, right, no. so these negatives are more like yeah. nitpicks and I'm looking sure. negatives. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll list them. Yeah. Um, so uh, I did kind of notice that they started to get like fed up pretty like fast into the movie like i expected like a yeah. little bit more time before they kind of got like uh fed up like oh yeah. god what's happening with the map you know and yeah. they started getting mad at heather so i was kind of like oh. well like that would happen anyway yeah i'm looking yeah. for things Louis. Yeah, because I'm like yeah they, they need to get I home because um, like they because they were only meant to be out there for i want a, a little bit more joy before the storm but i, I but get then they it, also though. get joy get halfway through you know, know, they, they yeah. get joy halfway through and then yeah. they, like, they go in between they flux of course um, another yeah. negative this isn't a negative this is just because I want more of this story is that yeah. I just wanted a little bit more of the before the wood stuff yeah. just a little bit more of the you know learning more about the backstory maybe seeing yeah. some drawn images I think we might have seen that already but like some, some more stuff of the witch so I can have but at the same time, we don't want to have yeah, images but, yeah. of what it is. I don't, but it's like, I yeah. just want to love more Bird backstory, Box tried to do that. more, of, like more of the documentary side of it. No, yeah. Not documentary side, but like more of it. More, I just want more backstory. I wanted more stuff before the woods because yeah. it felt like it can feel a little bit tedious just watching an entire movie set in the woods. Joe, no, yeah, I, I that do, it's just kind of like... I could agree if someone... Yeah. And I, I still, I, but that's just because I just want more in the story. And I get, you know, there's yeah. other sequels now, and there's a really great companion documentary that got released yeah. on the DVD yeah. that does that for you, and it's fantastic, and yeah. kind of scares me a lot, just as much as the movie. Yeah. Like, I, I, a funny story. I, I just want to quickly say, a funny yeah. story. The DVD that I've got, I think, released around the time the movie was released. Yeah. So this is when they were still trying to convince you that it's real. Yeah. And I was like, I watched the movie the first time, and I was like, oh, okay. This is really scary. Let's just watch some behind the scenes stuff to make me feel better. Yeah. And all of it was just like made to be real. So there was like a documentary yeah. about the backstory of the uh, of the witch. Yeah. Um and the missing and the missing, you know, documentarians yeah. and it's all these people yeah. um from the and town like, talking. And, and it has like an interview of the murderer oh, who the killed, mur- the, children oh, the, killed the, the children. Oh, the murderer killed the children. I was like, "Oh, great. This isn't helping yeah. me. This is scaring me more." It's great. But it's a great DVD it. that I have. Yeah. It's yeah, this one. This one. This one. But it's um yeah, it's such a it's such a uh yeah. yeah, I mean the, the, negatives, yeah. Are, the, negatives, the negatives are, are like, nitpicks. It's, it's just, like the negatives is a like lot sometimes more. it's a bit shaky, but like it's yeah. what can you do? I and just, like yeah. and like I would I I don't agree with like um like they get angry quite fast because like the I things think, they get I think, angry I think, at. I think I think it's just that I watched it the second time. I was like, oh, is it this quick that you got into it? First time, never noticed. Yeah, it. but I'm just looking for nitpicks, yeah. Louis. I'm yeah. looking for yeah. some yeah. negatives. Sure. Yeah, um, but I I. I basically I just want more. Yeah. I just want more stuff. But like to start. that's kind of the best thing a movie can do sometimes. Yeah. Like if but, it's perfect on its own, but you're like, oh, I want more. But like, that could be a good I thing. Think, and I just a like bad that thing. stuff. Like I love alternate reality stories. Yeah. So yeah. stuff like that would be cool. But yeah. still, no uh, negatives and nitpicks, my friends, yeah. and nitpicks. Okay. So should we rate um, this, baby? Yeah. Let's let's rate this because I I do have like more positive. They're pretty much like kind of a similar things. Yeah. And also, it's all starting to rain. It's starting to rain, starting for, to rain us. for us. Gosh, the weather yeah, rain on um, us. But, but like, yeah, more more my 
positives are like more of like the more like specific parts of the movie. Do you want to quick great. fire them? Can you quick fire them? Um, sure, I'll try to I'll try to uh, quick fire them. Um, the realness of um and the real uh as filmed and created more of the summer moments. Uh, just know anything scares them, even though just the wilderness noises. Just the um the less talking in the footage and them just sitting there mm. with just footing in, of the trees and their mental state becomes like like the more further on you get in the film, it's like less talking, more just filming. Mm. Um, and the seeing the twigs outside, yeah. and like, um, and then she just she's the she sees the twigs outside the tent. She goes, nope, she's done with it. She is the slow of her being fed up, knowing that it's not real, Josh, and what is actually coming, and the desperation of breaking pacing's them pretty awful. good as well. Just get that out there. Yeah. Pacing's pretty good. Uh, um, not knowing if it's the real Josh and screams in the distance, and them not knowing what to do. Like she, they don't even like we don't know what to do. Josh is screaming in the distance. It's not probably not him. He would tell us where they are. I don't know what to do. Just the, like just all that stuff, but it's just pretty much the same yeah. thing. All right, so anyway, that's, that's cool. This, this Before we we, we rate it, let's just tell you your our quick rating system. Yeah. Uh, at the bottom we have shit show, horrible, hate this film. Yeah. Above that we have bore snore, get, get out, out the door, door, which is boring. It may be someone, but it's it yeah. just it fails at really being like a proper well yeah. done movie, and I would get bored by it or just think it's just not very good. But yeah. it's not the worst than ever. Yeah. Um, above that is uh, d- for, for disappointment. disappointment, a movie that we could have thought had like, maybe had some great concepts, but just didn't use them very well. Well, was and it's a film that kind of just was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it could be good, but it's disappointing. It disappointing. Above that is hey, it's, it's fun. fun. It's on amazing. It's not fantastic. Standard but it's film. good. It's decent. Yeah. It's fun. It's an enjoyable watch. Yeah. Then above that is fantastically splendid. A really good film. Worth your time. Fantastic. Maybe a classic yeah. in the future, but just yeah, really yeah. well done. Really good. And, and at the very that top is, is masterpiece, classic, classic and masterpiece. If you can't guess already, I think we both can agree that this is, is a, a masterpiece. Classic, classic master, masterpiece. Classic masterpiece. I love this movie. So we much. love this movie. Hello. Oh, hi. Sorry. It started raining. It started raining, so we're under this hut. We're under a hut. I hope no one gets mad at us that we're using their hut. Um, but uh, basically, yeah. So this is we gave you our rating. We think it's a classic. We think yeah. it's a masterpiece. Um, and for good reason. Okay, don't come at us. Yeah, it's but, a good um, movie. Yeah, it was good. Right. For the Halloween ranking uh, franchise re- review. Oh, I don't know. How, Halloween. Halloween franchise, franchise ranking. ranking. Uh, I asked you. What movie, previous movie, was going to be referenced in the ending of Halloween Ends? And there is an answer, and it's pretty, it's a pretty good one. Yeah. The third movie, Halloween 3, Halloween 3 was going to be referenced at the end of Halloween Ends as Michael Myers' mask was going to be part of the Silver Shamrock collection. There you go. So, so there you go. Did you say something about a conveyor belt? So, like, it was, it was gonna... Uh, Michael Myers' mask was going to appear on a conveyor belt of the masks from Halloween 3. That was going yeah. to be very good. And it's confirmed by David Gordon Green. Yeah. Um, I have the tweet from it. Yeah, should we put a link in our video or something? They'll have to trust us. Yeah. I, I'll, it I'll, might be hard I'll to do that. Say, we yeah. might, we might not. Yeah. Whatever. Who cares? Um, but yeah. And now it's yeah. time to ask you a question for this week for all you horror nerds out there. Um, mm-hmm. The question I'm going to be asking you guys is a very simple one. In what state is the Blair Witch Project set? So what state will you find the Blair Witch? Um, I don't your options remember. are this. This is the United States, by the way. This is the, uh, yes. the country it's set in. Victoria, New Victoria, South Wales. New South, I, th- I, think it's, uh, I think it's the Northern Territory. I think it's ACT. Yeah, it could be, yeah. could be. No. Uh, but yeah, so basically here are your four options. We like to do a bit of a multiple choice. Um, was it Maine? Don't know where that is. Maine. Oregon, right? Or- I'm not sure. Maine. Uh-huh. North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Maryland. Uh-huh. Or Massachusetts? I have a guess. Can I guess? Guess. Maryland. Maryland? Don't tell me if it's true. Alright. Do you know the answer? Yeah, I just saw it. Oh, can you show me? I won't won't have any reaction. Okay. No reaction? No reaction. No reaction. No reaction. Anyway. Right. In the comments, let us know what you think. Um, Watch the movie. It's good. It's a good movie. It's on Stan. And if you enjoyed our review... Yeah. Uh, make sure to like, like and subscribe, and subscribe, watch and listen to the podcast version, and please tell us if there's any other horror movies out there where we can go to a specific location. Tell us, and we won't commit to it because it's too hard. No, yeah, we, yeah. Will. We'll, we will. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Anyway, um, thank you for thank you listening, for listening, oh, and, and watching. Have a have a good one. Look at the commitment we committed. <laughs> Look at this, and it stops raining. It's wow. Right. Anyway, anyway, have a good one. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Um, uh, it's looking clearer. Yeah. Um, 
I know you I have to we, go to your yeah. city lesson, but... And we did leave our equipment out there. Yeah, yeah, but I'm yeah, just saying, uh, we have to film our last sketch, dude. I don't have time. I have to go. It's already, like, I'm already going to be late. Uh, I don't know. Can, can I just film something? Is that okay? I'll, I'll just, it's going to be so okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. quick. But I'll, I'll just grab the camera and I'll just, yeah. I'll just film something, okay? You, yeah, you film, I'll pack up. Two, one. Okay. I'm, I'm lost in the woods and I, f I found, I found these weird, weird stone graves. Could this be the Blair Witch? I don't know if I'm gonna make it. All right, Louie, I'm heading back. Louie! Oh, for fuck's sake. See that? He's gone. He's fucking gone. He's gonna be packing up and he's not. For fuck's sake. Louie! Louie! Why is he over there? Fuck's sake! 